Welcome everyone to the next edition of the Retro Review Series here on OTRS Central. I hope you enjoyed the last installment where I reviewed WCW Sin 2001 because I know I sure did. Psycho Sid for the Hall of Fame, baby. But today we switch gears and we talk about a different show. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to have something to say after I say my piece. And this review, of course, is about WWF Invasion. The invasion angle ultimately answered the fundamental question of what if there was only one major American wrestling company around and Vince McMahon had bought both WCW and ECW, acquired the contracts of all these wrestlers, and was in charge of booking something that many fans had been waiting for decades to see. And how badly would he ultimately ruin this shit, drive away millions of wrestling fans, all for the sake of making it about him and his precious freaking ego to ultimately say that I'm the winner, I'm the winner. The whole invasion angle answered that question. And the first major step in answering that question was the shit that was WWF Invasion. The way I sum up the invasion angle and how people respond to it is as such. Typically, if you were under now the age of 30, you probably liked it. Like my girlfriend Ashley, loves the invasion angle. Thinks it was glorious. She's, of course, stupid because she sucked in by the names that were there, the crap that they did, some of the shock value of this and that and everything else. And frankly, because of her age, she didn't know any fucking better at the time. So she grew up on it thinking that this was okay, this was normal, and this was something that was exciting, hot, and awesome. Because you would get the occasional thing here and the occasional blip on the radar there of, wow, this is a cool moment. That's a cool moment. And not being able to fully grasp or understand the greater picture at play where fans over the age of 30, like myself specifically, age 36 right now, can look back and remember this whole time and say 2001 was a shitty year for the WWF and wrestling in general. The XFL fucking failed. WCW and ECW went under, were bought by Vincent K. McMahon. WrestleMania 17, that show that Dave Meltzer and so many fucks like the circle jerk to be in the greatest WrestleMania of all time, where we took the great hero of the Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and turned him heel and aligned him with Vincent K. McMahon because why? Because we fucking could. Because now, with no competition, with nobody to have to answer to, we can do whatever the fuck we want. And now we get to this point of the invasion angle. The 2001 year period was, in my opinion, the worst, for different reasons, year of professional wrestling in my lifetime because of what happened, because of what it signifies, because of what it represents, what went down, how it went down, and how terrible so much of it was. This whole angle was an abortion to so many wrestling fans like myself who actually lived through the Monday Night Wars. We lived through those battles. We grew up wondering for years what would happen if the Crockett territory took on WWF. What would happen if Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon were able to get their talent in the same building on the same night in the same goddamn ring? So fans over 30 that grew up in this and understand what it meant, understood what WCW and ECW being around really represented, what it meant for the business, who lived through all of this shit, who actually experienced and understood the awesomeness of the Monday Night Wars from a wrestling fan standpoint, logically should think that the invasion angle is the biggest piece of shit in professional wrestling history. You want to know why? Because it fucking was. What an abortion. And when you look at this show, this show is so stupid on so many different fucking levels. Like you've got WCW and ECW are invading the fucking WWF. But yet they're wearing WWF merchandise. They're able to come out through the entrance of the WWF. You've got WCW wrestlers calling the matches. Just from that standpoint alone, this shit was stupid. There was no invasion about this whatsoever. It made it look like fake 
plan bullshit instead of the real hard-hitting, edgy type of storyline that this should have fucking been. Then when you take a look back and you see how it ultimately played out, because of course it was ultimately going to fucking play out like this, the whole concept of this pay-per-view, even though there really was technically nothing at stake, there were no real stakes here. Does anybody remember anything truly being at play? And even through the night when they're talking about who's winning or who's winning what, did it fucking matter? The answer was no. So it was an entire fuck off show with absolutely no purpose or consequence in the grander scheme of things. Why? Because it's like they got these companies' names, they got the video libraries, they got the wrestlers' contracts, and they look at it and they say, hey, we got a 90, 100 plus guys that don't have a place to work. So let's just throw them in there and figure it out as we fucking go along. That's what the piece of shit this was. And then to sit there and say, oh my God, the last Nitro, Shane McMahon bought WCW. <laughs> we literally did that shit just so that way you could use that as a plot device to help build towards the Shane versus Vince match at WrestleMania. Because again, ultimately, everything had to be about the fucking McMahons. And now, as the invasion angle plays out, even though you've already got Paul Heyman in the midst, he was the owner of ECW. Now, for some particular reason, we throw Stephanie McMahon into the fucking mix, and she's the goddamn owner of ECW. So it is Vince McMahon and his WWF versus Shane McMahon's WCW and Stephanie's ECW. The alliance! <laughs> it's McMahon versus the fucking McMahons. And then to top it all off, all the evil shit that Vince McMahon has done over the years, kayfabe and real world, you're trying to push and promote this and book this as if Vince is the hero, if as if the WWF are the good guys. They just closed down WCW and ECW. There is no fucking way in the world, even with the large portion of the WWF loyal audience, that these guys can be the fucking heroes. None. Absolutely none. But even as this whole pay-per-view plays out, other than a highlight of, let's say, X-Pac, because, of course, X-Pac was a professional, even though he's a bitch and blocks people on Twitter. From a ring standpoint, he was actually a professional, knew what the hell he was doing. He embraced being a heel and actually came across like a heel, tried to put Kidman over as the babyface. Imagine fucking that, and it works. You know why it fucking works? It's because at that point in time, everybody was pissed off at the WWF. Whether it be for the Austin fucking heel turn, WCW and ECW being fucking wiped from the map, the XFL, and all this other bullshit, and now here we go, we're doing an invasion angle where it's the McMahon family, and it's all about the McMahon family, and oh, by the way, in the biggest battle of our lives in professional wrestling, let's have WCW go into the fold without the fucking NWO, Sting, Goldberg, Luger, Savage... Think about that for a second. S fucking Hogan, Nash, Hall, nowhere to be found. Goldberg, nowhere to be found. Sting, nowhere to be fucking found. Luger, nowhere to be fucking found. Randy Savage, nowhere to be found. Bischoff, nowhere to be found. Flair, nowhere to be found. So for the most part, just about every big massive name that you would want from a kayfabe standpoint to be there to fight the ultimate battle of your lives, to get revenge on the WWF. All the biggest stars, for the most part, of WCW of that time were nowhere to be found during this entire fucking story. On so many levels, this was retarded. And even the way the show started, it was retarded. Edge and Christian just have to go over Lance Storm and Mike Awesome. Why? Who fucking knows? What was the purpose of this match? What was really at stake? The answer is absolutely fucking nothing. And frankly, the match was just slightly above mediocre. And for some reason, we had to have Earl Hebner and Nick Patrick have a match on this show. Because we needed the referees, with all the wrestlers you had under fucking contract, we had to have the referees get a spot, get a match on this card. Because why? Who fucking knows? Because we had to have Mick Foley be the guest referee for multiple matches on this card. Because why? Because I don't fucking know. And I don't fucking understand it. The only thing that's funny when you go back and look is 16 years later, this whole shit, Earl Hebner and all the crooked crap that guy had been involved with over the years with the WWF. <laughs> he was more over than 95% of the WWE roster today. But Invasion had a match between two referees who again were fighting for absolutely nothing 
because some matches WWF officials were calling and some matches WCW officials were calling. And what the fuck is going on here? The APA beat O'Hare and Palumbo, the WCW Tag Team Champions, because of course we can't put the young guys over here. Neither belt was on the fucking line, if I remember correctly, and if they were, who fucking cares? At least I can say for Farouk and Bradshaw, the way their characters were presented up to this point in time, it was logical. These guys were locker room leaders. They were badasses the way they were presented on television. They looked like respectable figures. So they were the guys that were trying to lead the fight against WCW. So at least they were in a position where their role was somewhat sensible here. Uh, Raven beat William Regal in a horrible match. So many people talk about over the years how William Regal should have got a world title shot. You're fucking insane. I always felt like the WWE utilized him in good positions, in good roles, and did very wisely not to elevate him any higher on the card. Because there were often times where his matches, if you go back in history and you actually look and you actually know what the fuck you're talking about, his matches aren't that good. And this most certainly was not one of them. Something was off between him and Raven. But at least Raven was fucking there. And not there for too much longer, if I recall correctly. A six-man tag with Canyon, Stasiak, and Hugh Morris beating the one Billy Gunn, Big Show, and Albert. And this match lasted less than five minutes. Several of these matches on the card went less than ten minutes. Not all of them needed to, but we probably could have done without a referee match. We probably could have done without one or two other matches on this card and gotten a little bit more out of it. And part of it comes down to time management and wasting time doing other shit and all this other crap. Tajiri beat Taz and frankly, another forgettable match. The only thing that strikes you when you go back and watch it, you say, hey, Tajiri's not a big, very big guy, but fuck, Taz was a midget too. And the whole thing of, here's Taz, who was a representation of freaking ECW, and then he's aligned with WWF, but then he turns on him, and all this other dumb shit, and the way that played out later, just another smack in the face to ECW fans, and frankly, wrestling fans as a whole, too. One of the true highlights of this show was Rob Van Dam beating Jeff Hardy in the WWF Hardcore title match. So for the most part, We're going to sit there, if WCW is going to get one, if WCW is going to get a title from us, it is going to be a situation where the WCW is going to get lesser titles that aren't as important. And if we do have to flip bigger titles over, we'll figure out some bullshit to get that done too. So I want you to think about that. If I recall correctly, this was the one title match on this freaking card. The only title match on this freaking card. It was the match of the night, but to me, that's not really saying a whole lot. One of the few moments you could probably enjoy realistically as a wrestling fan, but then it ultimately fucking depresses you, is when you see Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler backstage talking about how they look at bras, how they look at panties, they look at each other, Tori and Stacey, kind of lesbian-like, and then Tori gives a little good game to fucking Stacey Keebler. It's good if you're a nasty fucker like me because it could potentially give you spank bank material. And I'm sure for some of you growing up in your teenage years, you found yourself getting funny feelings in your short pants. And he relieved the pressure, if you know what I mean. But then you realize these are the type of women you used to get. Trish Stratus, Stacey Keebler, and fucking Tori Wilson. And in today's WWE, you got guys going googly eye and all giggly tits over fucking people like Becky Lynch and goddamn Paige. Becky Lynch and Paige. In a decade and a half, we went from Trish Stratus, Daisy Keebler, and Tori Wilson to Becky Lynch and fucking Paige. How sad. In a bra and panties match, where once again we've got Mick Foley as the guest referee, for what reason I know not why. So... We incorporate the women here. I guess what fucking ever. But with all these stakes at the line, one of the matches you're going to put out there is a fucking bra and panties match. If that doesn't tell you that Vince didn't give a shit about this and Vince was just fucking with everybody and trolling the entire wrestling fan base, then I don't know what the fuck was. Oh, but there's more. You get to the big brawl fucking whatever the hell they called it. The big brawl, the inaugural brawl, whatever the hell they talk about. Oh, look at the teams here. Team WWF has Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, 
and the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and The Undertaker. The Alliance rolls in to this massive main event in this first chance to really truly get their hands on the WWF. And you've got Booker T, DDP, the Dudleys, and fucking Rhino. And then, not to mention, you've got DDP, former multiple-time world champion for WCW, one of their bigger names in the brand that you used to do stuff with Carl Malone and Jay Leno with. You bring him in and you have him stalking The Undertaker's fucking wife and trying to kidnap Stone Cold Steve Austin. Again, this is the type of fucking bullshit that I talk about. It's bringing in guys like this and fucking with them and putting them in ridiculously dumb dick situations and being surprised when they fucking fail because you ultimately wanted them to fail because you didn't want to have the fucking guys to begin with. And this whole match is stupid because, of course, ultimately, the alliance with the B-plus players that they were fucking going into this with against Team WWF couldn't win clean, couldn't win legit, They had to win because it came down again to Stone Cold Steve Austin who fucking turned heel an emotional puss at WrestleMania 17 and afterwards who is now the big anti-hero, the old Stone Cold, has to turn on the fucking Team WWF in order to help the Alliance win. Because this was all planned? Because this was all choreographed? So instead of having somebody... Hmm. Instead of having somebody on the Alliance's side that was actually big name, like really big, make an appearance here, whether it was Hall, Hogan, Nash, the NWO, whether it was Sting, whether it was Goldberg, whether it was Flair, whether it was Bischoff, whether it was Luger, Macho Man, whoever the fuck it was, you decide the only way that the Alliance can still go over is because somebody from the WWE has to go over to that side of the fence. It can't because of WCW and ECW on their own merits or because of their own people. It still has to be ultimately because of one of Vince's people. What a fucking joke. So now as things play out eventually throughout the rest of the invasion angle, you eventually get to Austin and Angle feuding over the fucking WWF title. Rock comes back, if I remember correctly, beats Booker T at SummerSlam for the WCW title. So the WWF has the WCW title. The WCW has the WWF title. And it's all just a bunch of bullshit. So that way, when we ultimately get to the big Survivor Series 5-on-5 main event, it still requires somebody to turn in order for WWF to win in this case because, again, it's the WWF that holds all the cards. It's the WWF that has to determine everything. It's the WWF that has to be featured so prominently it's strong at every point in turn that fucking matters. If you go back and watch a show like Invasion, other than for noticing how hot the crods are at that time, Other than for saying, hey, I even forgot about this. Or it's cool to see these guys in the ring. And shit like that. If you really truly enjoy this show, then shame on fucking you. Because this is the first pay-per-view. Even though it did record pay-per-view buys for being a non-WrestleMania. I still think to this day, it was the highest non-WrestleMania pay-per-view buy the company ever had. And it still didn't do a million buys. And you're talking about... This was the invasion. This was the ultimate of ultimates. And they couldn't even get a million pay-per-view buys for all these WCW and ECW wrestlers. Why? Because the smart people like me at that time already knew what the fuck the deal was, already knew what the fuck was up. You were going with WCW's B and C players going up against the WWF knowing Vince was in charge of this and knowing ultimately he was going to make an abortion out of it. And that's exactly what the fuck he did. So did I like this pay-per-view? Fuck no, I didn't like this pay-per-view. I resented every minute that I had to fucking watch it. And if you ever go back and watch it, you should too. All the crap that we try to block out of the WWE's existence, we don't block Superfly out of there, but we block fucking Chris Benoit out of existence as much as we possibly can. How about we take one big broad eraser to everything involved with the invasion angle and completely wipe it out of the fucking picture? That way we don't have to remember it, so that way we don't have to talk about it anymore. But unfortunately, we can't. What grade does this show get? It gets a big, fat fucking F. 
If you come into the comments talking about match quality, fuck you. If you come into the comments on this video talking about how great the stories were, again, big fuck you. If you think it was okay for it to ultimately be about McMahon versus the McMahons, fuck you. If you think it's okay that in the biggest battle of all time in wrestling that fans had literally wondered for decades about, especially when it comes to WWF and WCW, how is this shit going to play out? If you felt like this was an appropriate culmination and blow off to the Monday Night Wars, fuck you. If you think it's okay that we had WCW without any of the real true people that truly mattered the most and the biggest stars from WCW's time where at one point in time they were actually beating the WWF in the ratings and you think that was okay, then again, fuck you. And most importantly at all, since we're handing out fuck yous, to the WWF at the time, in particular, ultimately, the architect of all this bullshit, Vincent K. McMahon, you accomplished your mission. You established that you were superior. You established that WCW and ECW were afterthoughts and footnotes, and fuck them. And what you also accomplished was driving away millions of wrestling fans, millions of wrestling fans that have never come back to the business. And do you know why? It's because of bullshit like this. Ultimately, what you did was you pissed the fans off and frankly, you hurt a lot of fans' feelings. So for Vince McMahon, for 2001, for turning Austin Hill at WrestleMania 17 because he fucking could, for buying out WCW and ECW and shutting them down, for the XFL and all allowing that to fucking fail because we just had to make it about Vince and all his pre-choreographed bullshit because again, it was another example of if it doesn't directly tie to the WWF and you try to branch out the WWF and Vince McMahon don't know what the fuck they're doing. See, as they mentioned several times in this pay-per-view, WWF Times Square, New York, where's that fucking place now exactly? Vince McMahon for the invasion angle. I want to give you the biggest, fattest, wettest fucking... Fuck you of all! Fuck this show! Minus five stars! Kiss my ass!